Hi, my name is Anand Venkateshan and I'm the Quant, Verbal and GK faculty for the CLAG program at Mentors Capital. To access a free mock, you don't have anything to do. Go to this video in the description and click the link there and follow the next steps. All of our mocks come with quality guarantee. Why? Because pattern and difficulty will be like the past year papers. And then, on our portal, you will get score analysis and detailed explanations. So what are you waiting for? Access your free mock today. GK is a very vast area. और इसकी तैयारी करते वक्त आपका एफिशिएंट होना बहुत ज्यादा जरूरी है इसीलिए इस सीरीज में हर वीडियो में मैं एक हफ्ते का जीके और उससे रिलेटेड क्वेश्चंस आपके सामने प्रेजेंट करूंगा मतलब ऑलमोस्ट 45 मिनट्स के इस वीडियो में आपको ऑलमोस्ट 100 क्वेश्चंस गेन हो जाएंगे जिससे कि आपका नॉलेज सिग्निफिकेंटली इंप्रूव हो जाएगा और तो और हर वीडियो में जो रिसर्च के लिंक्स हैं वो हम कंपाइल करके आपके साथ शेयर करेंगे सो लेट्स स्टार्ट आर क्लास नाउ आज की वीडियो में आपका स्वागत है आज हम फेब लास्ट वीक और मार्च फर्स्ट वीक का जीके डिस्कस करेंगे 2023 का जीके है इस ईयर के क्लैट के लिए बहुत ही रेलेवेंट होगा ये एज यूजुअल मेथोडोलॉजी बिल्कुल सेम रहेगा मैं इस हफ्ते के जीके के बेसिस पे पैसेजेस और क्वेश्चंस आपके साथ डिस्कस करूंगा अगर आप इसको टेस्ट फॉर्म में अटेम्प्ट करना चाहते हैं आई वु रियली रिकमेंड प्रैक्टिस के लिए कि आप साइन अप कर ले वीडियो के डिस्क्रिप्शन में एक लिंक है लिंक पे जाएं साइन अप कीजिए और आपको ये सारे क्वेश्चंस टेस्ट के फॉर्म में भी मिलेंगे मतलब आगे आप इसको जो है रिवाइज कर सकते हैं प्रैक्टिस कर सकते हैं उस टेस्ट में एंड मोर इंपॉर्टेंटली उस टेस्ट में मैं आपको इन्हीं टॉपिक्स पे एडिशनल रिसर्च लिंक्स भी दूंगा जिससे कि आप आगे चल करके उस पर और भी क्वेश्चन निकाल सकते हैं और भी डेटा पॉइंट आप कलेक्ट कर सकते हैं राइट सो वेरी वेरी यूजफुल फॉर यू तो ट्राई जरूर कीजिए साइन अप जरूर कीजिए All right, तो इस हफ्ते हम कौन से टॉपिक्स डिस्कस करेंगे वेल well, काफी सारे टॉपिक्स हैं दिस स्टार्ट फ्रॉम द मार्कोनिक प्राइस ऑफ 2023 अदानी फर्म पे एनएससी नेशनल स्टॉक एक्सचेंज के इंडाइसिस का एक कंट्रोवर्सी चल रहा है सोला वॉटर सोला कुक स्टाफ मेंस्ट्रुअल लीव के पॉलिसीज ई वेस्ट के रूल्स अडॉप्ट हेरिटेज का स्कीम विंटर फ्रेमवर्क जो भी आयरलैंड नॉर्दर्न आयरलैंड में इम्प्लीमेंट uh, हो रहा है आरबीआई पायलट ऑन कॉइन वेंडिंग मशीन India Australia our partnership on higher education arrest warrant uh, Imran Khan ke against economic offenders at, at the G20 and finally US selling F16 planes to Taiwan so dekhiye kafi sare topics hain jo aaj discuss karenge pehle topic ke sath start karte hain right to pehla topic hai hamara 2023 ka marconi prize to to basically vishesh baat ye hai ki indian scientist hari balakrishnan ko computer scientist hai ye jo एम आई टी में प्रोफेसर है और इनको 2023 का मार्कोनी प्राइस दिया गया है इससे पहले इंडियंस जो है विन कर चुके हैं मार्कोनी का प्राइस इट्स क्वाइट अ ऑनर एंड उनको जो है अपने कंट्रीब्यूशन के लिए ये प्राइस मिला है तो इसके बेसिस पे क्या क्वेश्चंस बन सकते हैं वेल प्राइजेस की बात कर रहे हैं तो इंडिया का कौन सा इकोनॉमिक था जिन्होंने इनको नोबल प्राइज मिला इकोनॉमिक्स का टू में मैथमेटिक्स में स्पेसिफिकली एक बहुत प्रेस्टिजियस प्राइज है कॉल्ड द रामानुजम प्राइज फॉर यंग मैथमेटिशियन तो 2021 में फोर्थ इंडियन थीम जिनको ये प्राइज मिला वो कौन थे वो कौन थी व्हाट इज द हाईएस्ट अवार्ड मैथमेटिक्स की फील्ड में सबसे ज्यादा प्रेस्टिजियस और हाईएस्ट अवार्ड कौन सा माना जाता है uh, ऐसे कौन से इंडियन और एशियन थे जो जिनको पहली बार नोबल प्राइज मिला था साइंस में uh, और इंजीनियर्स डे किन के बर्थडे पे हम सेलिब्रेट करते हैं और वो साइंटिस्ट जो इंडिया के हैं वो एक भारत रत्न अवार्डी भी हैं तो ये कौन से साइंटिस्ट हैं राइट तो इसके आंसर्स देखते हैं uh, 2019 में जो नोबेल प्राइज इकोनॉमिक्स मिला था वो थे मिस्टर अभिजीत बैनर्जी डेवलपमेंटल इकोनॉमिक्स के लिए मिला था और इससे पहले uh, इंडिया से इकोनॉमिक्स uh, के लिए नोबेल प्राइज जो है अमृत्य सेन को भी मिल चुका है पहले आई होप यू रिमेम्बर दैट रामानुजम प्राइज फॉर यंग मैथमेटिशियंस ये मिला है नीना गुप्ता जी को जो इंडियन स्टेटिस्टिकल इंस्टीट्यूट में प्रोफेसर है और मैथमेटिक्स के फील्ड में जो हाईएस्ट अवार्ड है वो फील्ड्स मेडल माना जाता है जो अंडर फोर्टी के रिसर्चर्स को फील्ड्स मेडल दिया जाता है सो इट्स वेरी प्रेस्टिजियस बट इस पे एक इस पे एक टाइम का लिमिट भी है हु इज द फर्स्ट इंडियन फर्स्ट एशियन एंड नॉन वाइट मेल जिनको नोबेल प्राइज मिला था साइंस के फील्ड में तो वो थे सी वी रामन चंद्रशेखर वेंकट रामन सीवी रमन के नाम पे रमन इफेक्ट है जिनके जो काफी सेलिब्रेटेड है साइंस की फील्ड में और उसके लिए उनको 
नोबेल प्राइज इन साइंस मिला था और इंजीनियर्स डे जो सेलिब्रेट किया जाता है सेप्टेम्बर फिफ्टीन को दैट इज सेलिब्रेटेड ऑन द बर्थ एनिवर्सरी ऑफ एम विश्वेश्वरैया मोक्षकुंडम विश्वेश्वरैया राइट सो दैट इज द आंसर टू दिस पर्टिकुलर क्वेश्चन राइट कंटिन्यू करते हैं अगले टॉपिक पे आते हैं नेक्स्ट टॉपिक फॉर डिस्कशन आपके स्क्रीन पे भी आ रहा है अदानी फॉर्म्स जो है नेशनल स्टॉक एक्सचेंज के इंडाइसिस पे लिस्टेड है तो फाइनेंशियल एक्सपर्ट्स ने मांग की है कि uh, इस पे इंटरवेंशन आया जाए क्योंकि नेशनल स्टॉक एक्सचेंज और सेबी ने जो है एनएससी uh, की सब्सिडी की मूव को क्वेश्चन किया है जिससे कि पांच अदानी फॉर्म को जो है स्टॉक इंडाइसिस में इंक्लूड किया जा रहा है एनएससी के स्टॉक इंडाइसिस हैं काफी सारे और उनमें से कई सारे इंडाइसिस में अदानी के फॉर्म्स को इंक्लूड किया जा रहा है एंड दैट्स मैटर ऑफ कंट्रोवर्सी तो अदानी पे ही ये फॉलो अप टॉपिक है अदानी पे पहले भी मैं एक टॉपिक डिस्कस कर चुका हूँ डू वॉच प्रीवियस वीडियो बट इस टॉपिक पे क्या क्वेश्चन बन सकते हैं एनएससी का जो इंडेक्स है सबसे ज्यादा पॉपुलर बेंच इंडेक्स है उसकी इस नाम से जाना जाता है और इसके अलावा इंडिया का कौन सा मेजर बेंच इंडेक्स है राइट काफी हिंडनबर्ग ने अदानी से पहले एक कंपनी के अगेंस्ट रिसर्च किया था अपना अपना खुलासा किया था और उसके बेसिस पे उन्होंने एक यू नो क्वेश्चंस रेज किए थे अबाउट एक कंपनी का प्रोपोर्शनल वीडियो राइट और उस उन क्लेम्स के बाद जो है कंपनी के फाउंडर और प्रमोटर और चेयरमैन जो है एग्जीक्यूटिव चेयरमैन जो है उनको रिजाइन करना पड़ा था तो ये कौन सी कंपनी थी और फिर सभी वो जो है सिक्योरिटीज एक्सचेंज ब्यूरो ऑफ इंडिया It was constituted as a non-statutory body, है ना? तो पहले एक institute कही गई थी as a non-statutory body और फिर उसको फिर statutory body के नाम से establish किया गया था तो ये कौन से कौन से सालों में हुआ था right? तो answer देखते हैं NSE का जो benchmark index है उसको Nifty 50 के नाम से जाना जाता है and this is uh, you know an alternative to the BSE Sensex which is uh, the stock exchange uh, Bombay Stock Exchange का जो है benchmark index है एम सी एस आई और मॉर्गन स्टैंडली कैपिटल इंटरनेशनल कॉर्पोरेटेड इज द ग्लोबल स्टॉक इंडेक्स प्रोवाइडर ग्लोबल इंडेक्स प्रोवाइडर जिन्होंने ऑब्वियसली डेफर किया है अधानी के वेटेजेस को चेंज करना चाहिए कि नहीं करना चाहिए uh, और निकोला कॉर्पोरेशन है जो कंपनी मैन्युफैक्चर करती है बैटरीज एंड एंड ऑटोमोबाइल रिलेटेड इक्विपमेंट तो निकोला फाउंडेशन को जो है के एक प्रोमोशनल वीडियो पे इंडनबर्ग में काफी कंट्रोवर्शियल क्लेम्स किए थे क्लेमिंग दैट द वीडियो वाज फेक एंड दैट द ट्रक यूज्ड वाज इंडीड अ नॉर्मल ट्रक है ना इसमें कोई स्पेशल कैपेबिलिटीज नहीं है तो इसके बाद उनके चेयरमैन और फाउंडर और एग्जीक्यूटिव चेयरमैन को रिजाइन करना पड़ा था एंड 1988 में सेबी जो है पहली बार एज अ नॉन स्टैट्यूटरी बॉडी एस्टैब्लिश हुई थी और फिर 4 साल बाद 92 में इट वाज देन एस्टैब्लिश्ड एज अ स्टैट्यूटरी बॉडी सो दोस आर द डेट्स फॉर सेबी नेक्स्ट टॉपिक पे आते हैं सोलर कुक स्टफ राइट तो 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 बात ये है कि एक लॉन्च हुआ है इंडियन ऑयल कॉर्पोरेशन ने जो है अपना एक सोलर कुक स्टफ लॉन्च किया है इंडिया एनर्जी वीक 2023 में व्हिच वाज इन यू नो द मंथ ऑफ फेब्रुवरी फेब्रुवरी सिक्स टू एथ और बेंगलोर में हुए शो में जो है ये प्रेजेंट किया है प्राइम मिनिस्टर मोदी ने इनोग्रेट किया तो बेसिकली गवर्नमेंट इज ऑल्सो सॉर्ट ऑफ बींग इन्वॉल्व इन दिस सोलर कुक स्टफ और ऑब्वियसली द मोटिव इज वेरी क्लियर की हम चाहते हैं कि गांव गांव देश में एलपीजी का यूजेज कम हो और 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 रिन्यूएबल सोर्सेस से जो है अगर हम कुकिंग कर सकते हैं दैट विल आल्सो रिड्यूस द कार्बन फुटप्रिंट एंड दैट विल आल्सो इंप्रूव द एफिशिएंसी है ना तो ये कुक स्टफ इंट्रोड्यूस किया गया है बट वाज इट द फर्स्ट टाइम आर देयर अदर इंस्टेंसेस इन हिस्ट्री आइए इस पे कुछ क्वेश्चंस देखते हैं एलपीजी की बात कर रहे हैं तो एलपीजी का फुल फॉर्म क्या है गवर्नमेंट uh, का जो है पहला अटेम्प्ट क्या था व्हिच वाज यू नो हाउस होल्ड एनर्जी कंजम्पन को ट्रांसफॉर्म करने के लिए पहला एक एफर्ट मारा था जब उन्होंने सोलर कुकर लॉन्च किया था अर्ली 1950s में तो ये जो है सोलर कुकर किसका किस कंपनी का किस ऑर्गेनाइजेशन का क्रिएटेड था व्हाट वाज द अर्स्ट वाइल लेम जो अभी हम मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ न्यू एंड रिन्यूएबल एनर्जी के नाम से जानते हैं इस मिनिस्ट्री का पुराना नाम क्या था राइट तो इजी क्वेश्चन था कुछ तो इसमें एलपीजी का फुल फॉर्म ऑब्वियसली वेरी स्ट्रेट फॉरवर्ड लिक्विफाइड पेट्रोलियम गैस 
uh, or NPL or the National Physical Laboratory, right, was the one, was the organization which launched in the solar booker in the 1950s. And the first while Ministry of New and Renewable Energy was actually called the Ministry of Non-Conventional Energy Sources. Uh, but is there are other questions? Hai. What is the name of the program launched in June 2014? In fact, 2014 was the first scheme thi to in, improve biomass cook stuff. Right? It was the first scheme to uh, refurbish and rehash in 2014. It was launched in the first program. Ka naam uh, and in a fresh trust to clean energy, India has committed 30,000 crores in this budget. So, what is the direction of this field? Mein jo hai investment commit kiya hai. So, Unnat Chulha Abhiyan is the name of the program launched in 2014. They want to improve biomass cook stuff, ko, jo hai, transform and use it in our country, and biomass ki usage ko badhaya jai, LPG ki usage. Ko jai, right? uh, and 35,000 crore jo hai, India has committed in this budget mein, towards clean hydrogen, green hydrogen, sorry. So, uh, this is a very ambitious program, or, uh, you know, the two are in this program, ke mein, but uh, it's still one that the government has committed towards. <laughs> Aage hai. Next topic, hai. next topic is about uh, OTT regulation, right? Ki, uh, OTT channels, which we have seen in the past, in the past, in the the IT rules, information technology, intermediary guidelines, and digital media ethics rules, right? IT rules, which were launched in 2021, but uh, Ministry of IB, Information and Broadcasting, gave this task to that OTT or online platforms or intermediaries also regulate. So, there is no concrete thing to make it concrete, although the rules are included, hai, that is, it talks about self-regulation, that talks about uh, oversight mechanism, but ye kafi flimsy hai, right? So, so, uh, iske baare mein ye uh, passage hai, to ispe questions kya ban sakte hai, kyunki hum OTT regulation ki baat kar rahe hai, obviously, one of the first questions is ki OTT hai ta, hai kya? What is the full form of OTT? Uh, aur Australia ke alawa, ek aur company hai, jisne bahut clearly OTT ko bhi jo hai, media ke under dal kar ke regulation ke rules pass kar chukhe hai, right? So, which is that country? And Information and Broadcasting Ministry ke jo hai, Union Minister ko hai, right? So answers dekhte hai, iske OTT ka full form hai, over the top, right? This is the name given to, let's say, Netflix, Amazon, uh, Hotstar, and many, many other such platforms which have burgeoned last those three, two, three saal mein. Uh, aur Australia ke alawa, Singapore is the other country which ne pure media ko ek rupay dal kar ke jo hai, uh, statute pass kiya hai, law pass kiya hai, power, power, parliament mein jis, which can be used to regulate these platforms. And uh, the minister for IB, Ministry of IB, the union minister is Anurag Thakur Ji. Uh, OTT regulation, there are other questions. Hai. Uh, IT rules 2021, the draft amendments proposed in June 2022, mein, uh, usne jo hai enhanced kiya hai capability, uh, the responsibility and the power of SMIs. So, uh, SMI, jo hai, what is its full form? Right, because ye, this order mein is, uh, is vishay mein ye kafi relevant name hai. What is what are SMIs? Uh, and according to a report by MICA, right, uh, the Mudra Institute of Communications, Center for Media and Entertainment Studies, you know, a report nikala hai, kaun se OTT platform ka greatest number of subscribers hai in India mein. Ye, I think ek saal purana report zarur hai. Uh, so take it with a pinch of salt, the number of subscribers might have changed, but at the time of this report, who had the most number of subscribers in our country? Which OTT platform, right? So, answers dekhte hai, SMI ka full form hai, social media intermediaries. So, uh, platforms ko hi intermediaries ke naam se jana jata hai, because content is created by other people. The consumer is a different person, but the intermediary is the platform, right? So, SMIs ke naam se inko jana jata hai. Uh, or, uh, amongst OTT platforms in India, Disney Hotstar is the one which has the most number of subscribers. Obviously, baat hai kyunki inke paas sub type ka content hai, sports, entertainment, movies, and so on and so forth. Achha. Agla topic dekhte hai, men menstrual leave ke policies, right? It's a very, again, a very, very, uh, you know, relevant topic aaj ke din mein, uh, because we're talking about equality and equity. So, Supreme Court ne jo hai, ek PIL hua tha, uh, about menstrual, ask, demanding for menstrual leave for workers, and Opposition the house against petition ke against argue karne wala jo side tha unne bola tha ki nahi aisa agar aap uh, 
यू नो पॉलिसी अगर आप इंस्टीट्यूट करते हैं दैट विल इवन बी इवन मोर डेट्रीमेंटल टू वुमेन बिकॉज डिस्क्रिमिनेशन होगा इसके बेसिस पे बिकॉज एम्प्लॉयर नोज की उसको छुट्टी देनी है तो वाई शुड ई गो आउट एंड हायर मोर वुमेन कैंडिडेट राइट सो देर आर डिफरेंट डायमेंशन टू दिस दिस इज समथिंग दैट द दैट द सुप्रीम कोर्ट जज जो कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन बेंच था उन्होंने भी ये चीफ जस्टिस ऑफ इंडिया है उन्होंने भी ये बात जाहिर की थी राइट बट देर ऑर्डर ऑन दिस इज अ मैटर ऑफ यू नो पार्लियामेंट की पॉलिसी हम नहीं पास करें तो इंडिया में एज इट स्टैंड क्वेश्चन देखते हैं इंडिया में एज इट स्टैंड विच स्टेट है कौन सा देश जो है पहला ऐसा देश था जिसने मेन्स्ट्रल लीव यू नो एज अ पॉलिसी दैट ग्रांटेड इट टू वुमेन विच एशियन इकोनॉमी वाज़ द फर्स्ट टू इंट्रोड्यूस मेन्स्ट्रल लीव एज पार्ट ऑफ लेबर लॉज राइट तो यूरोप की यूरोप में सबसे पहली कंट्री कौन थी एशिया में पहली कंट्री कौन सी थी और अफ्रीका में यू नो एक कंट्री है जिसने मेन्स्ट्रल लीव ऑफ वन डे अ मंथ विदाउट आस्किंग एनी क्वेश्चन विदाउट नीडिंग अ सर्टिफिकेट एंड इवन कॉलिंग इट मदर्स डे राइट तो ये कौन सा कौन सा देश था एंड फाइनली एक पार्लियामेंट में एक ऐसा बिल पास किया गया है दैट एम्स टू प्रोवाइड थ्री डेज ऑफ लीव टू वुमेन एंड ट्रांसजेंडर वुमेन ड्यूरिंग यू नो मेंस्ट्रुअल पीरियड तो इस बिल का नाम बताइए राइट एंड एंड ऑब्वियसली बिकॉज दिस बिल इज देयर डी वाई चंद्रचूर जो हमारे चीफ जस्टिस ऑफ इंडिया है उन्होंने जो है रेफ्यूज टू सॉर्ट ऑफ एंटरटेन दिस प्लीज रेफ्यूज टू सॉर्ट ऑफ यू नो पास इन जजमेंट उन्होंने कहा कि ये मैटर पार्लियामेंट का है तो आंसर्स uh, देखते हैं इंडिया में केरला एंड बिहार सरप्राइजिंग बात है देखिए बिहार में भी मेंस्ट्रुअल लीव का uh, के छुट्टी जो है इज ऑलरेडी अ मैटर दैट हैज बीन इंट्रोड्यूस्ड एंड यूरोप में सबसे पहला कंट्री जो uh, जिसने मेंस्ट्रुअल लीव का यू नो रूल पास किया था दैट वाज स्पेन द सेम इन एशिया वाज जापान एंड एज फार बैक एज 1947 जापान हैड हॉलीडेज फॉर और लीव फॉर मेंस्ट्रुअल साइकल्स Uh, and australia mein sorry africa mein zambia was the country which you know introduced a one day no holds barred no questions asked on leave which is also christened as the mothers day uh, or abhi jo hai parliament mein jo bill pass kiya hai right of women to menstrual leave and act free access to menstrual health practices uh, men- men- menstrual health products uh, bill right so this is a bill that has been introduced into the parliament in uh and and hopefully is is bill ke aate jo hai women will obviously have reasons to celebrate across the country right so to find out more on this topic uh video ke description mein jaiye link uh main aapko dunga uh video ke description mein jo hai sign up kar payenge aap sign up karke jab aap isko test form mein lenge then uh on all of these topics you will find additional research links right so so don't hesitate aaj hi sign up kar lijiye uh next topic go daddy pe cyber attack hua hai recently is saal uh and apparently even though it was uh, khulasa iska feb 16th ko zarur kiya tha but uh you know it's been going on for some time at go daddy right so so this is a matter of grave concern uh, agar uh, is company mein ho sakta to india mein bhi kai baar iske instances ho chuke hain right so pehla question hai ki go daddy kaun si com- kaun si country mein headquartered hai and according to go daddy the cyber attacks that happened they when were they carried out obviously the report feb feb 16th ko zarur hua hai but it happened much before that uh and because the attackers managed to you know gra- get access to the c panel what is the c panel right c panel is a graphic interface jo uh, agar aap websites uh, pe kaam karte hain agar aap websites uh, ke domains pe kaam karte hain to then c panel aap zarur use kar rahe honge right c panel is a graphic user interface jiske basis pe aap website ke basic uh, cheezon ko manage kar pate hain server wagera wagera cheezon ko aap manage kar pate hain apne website pe right but c panel jo hai kaun se operating system ke basis pe chalta hai right it's uh what is that what is the name of that os uh similarly malware malware jo kafi aaj ke din famous hai uh malware and phishing are phenomena which are very very famous in these in this era of cyber attacks so what is malware and vpn ka full form kya hai uh to answers dekhte hain ji go daddy jo hai usa mein headquartered company hai uh and is company pe 2020 se 2022 march 2020 se leke uh december 2022 tak ke period mein takriban यू नो ऑलमोस्ट टू इयर्स के इस ड्यूरेशन पे इन पे साइबर अटैक्स हुए हैं ऑफ वेरिंग डिग्रीज एंड जहां तक बात है टेक वाले क्वेश्चंस की यहां पे सी पैनल इज अ लाइनक्स बेस्ड ओएस एंड 
uh, malware is a malicious software that can be installed and and in this case one of the things that the hackers did is also that they installed malware right in fact agar aapko yaad hai to nsc ke servers pe bhi ek malware in, uh, install kar diya gaya tha jiske basis pe uh, with was an insider who was involved in that matter but but still it was a case of malware you know a, a software uh, you know that malicious software that was installed on the computer servers uh, and vpn uh, is something that obviously most kids today know is a virtual private network which allows you know you to mask your uh, your uh, ip right uh, so so that's something uh, that was discussed from this topic agla topic dekhte hain vemula rohit vemula jo kafi और कांग्रेस की भी मांग है कि रोहित मेमुला एक्ट पास किया जाए कि इसके बेसिस पे एस सी एस टी ओबीसी कैटेगरीज में आने वाले स्टूडेंट्स को सेफ गार्ड माइनॉरिटीज को सेफ गार्ड किया जाएगा इसके लिए अलग एक मिनिस्ट्री हम बनाएंगे दीज आर ऑल थिंग्स दैट द कांग्रेस uh you know in opposition has committed you know as part of its election campaign uh and so obviously is vishay pe jo questions bhi banenge wo similar banenge but first of all since this was about a congress plenary uh congress ki meeting thi to pehli jo plenary inc indian national congress ki hui thi wo kaun se saal mein hui thi i hope you remember that the founder was ayo yu uh and uh, number 2 uh congress manifesto mein poorest of poorest families ko ek minimum income ki guarantee di gayi thi 6000 rupees per mahine right which very similar to the narega scheme right so uh, name this scheme that the congress government has proposed in fact it has also implemented the same scheme in one of its states which state has already implemented this scheme right so 1885 was the year in which congress uh, held its first plenary and uh, and <clears throat> nyuntam aay yojana or nyay Uh, is the name of the scheme that uh, the congress is proposing as a minimum guarantee of rupees 6000 to or people from the poorest families uh, and is assurance ko jo hai implement kiya gaya hai chatisgarh ke state mein uh, nyay scheme has already been implemented and there are two other questions isi for isi topic se uh, greater uh, representation of youth or youngest members रिप्रेजेंटेशन को बूस्ट करने के लिए कांग्रेस ने एक फॉर्मूला प्रपोज किया था अपने यू नो सेंट्रल वर्किंग कमिटी लेवल से लेके ब्लॉक लेवल तक राइट सो राइट फ्रॉम द टॉप टू द लोअर मोस्ट लेवल्स तक यंगेस्ट मेंबर्स का रिप्रेजेंटेशन बढ़ाने के लिए एक फॉर्मूला उन्होंने प्रपोज किया था वॉट वॉज दैट फॉर्मूला एंड विच क्राइटीरिया प्रिस्क्राइब्स और रादर विच कमिटी प्रिस्क्राइब्स द क्राइटीरिया एंड द प्रोसीजर इन ऑर्डर टू एड सर्टन Uh, SC tribes new castes to the ST list. I mean, scheduled tribes' ki list. Me, new caste ko add karne ka procedure jo hai, kaun sa, kaun se committee ke directions ke basis pe hai, right? So, iske answers dekhte hain. The 50 below 50 is the name of the formula jo Congress ne propose kiya hai ki ham at least 50 percent uh, har stage pe at least 50 percent members should people who are below 50 years of age, right? So that's the intent of this formula. Uh, and the Lokur committee, Justice Lokur. Uh, इस कमेटी के हेड थे और इन इस कमेटी के uh, जो प्रपोजल्स uh, हैं उन्हीं के बेसिस पे दीज आर द क्राइटेरिया दैट आर यूज्ड टू ऐड न्यू शेड्यूल न्यू कास्ट टू द लिस्ट ऑफ शेड्यूल्ड ट्राइब्स और और इस पे और भी आप काफी रिसर्च कर सकते हैं इफ यू वांट टू रीड मोर अबाउट रोहित वेमिला इफ यू वांट टू रीड मोर अबाउट वॉट यू नो अबाउट दिस टॉपिक देन रजिस्टर कीजिए हमारे वेबसाइट पे लिंक पे जाइए साइन अप कीजिए एंड यू विल बी एबल टू सी you know the research links and and do your own reading on this uh, next topic pe aate hain e waste ke rules right uh, electronic waste i think everybody is aware of in in today's world but in 2022 ke november uh, the ministry of environment and forest ne jo hai ek nayi notification di thi e waste rules pe right uh, to uh, is uh, is e waste rules pe agar aap aur padhna chahte hain uh, do do read up on that uh, and मतलब इस पे काफी रेगुलेशन जो है पास हुए हैं राइट सो इस पे क्वेश्चंस क्या बन रहे हैं इन विच यूर वर ई वेस्ट टूल्स फर्स्ट नोटिफाइड और किसको जो है रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी दी जाती है फॉर कलेक्शन एंड डिस्पोजल ऑफ देन यू नो कि कंज्यूमर यूज कर रहा है बट डिस्पोज कौन करेगा एंड अकॉर्डिंग टू द ड्राफ्ट रूल्स जो अभी हम बात कर रहे हैं ड्राफ्ट रूल्स की इनके बेसिस पे इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स मैन्युफैक्चरर्स दैट 
uh, and and any businesses that generate e-waste, we need to ensure at least what percentage of their e-waste is collected and recycled. Right. So this actually answers the previous question. That 2011, me, jo hai e-waste tools pehle notify kiye gaye the, uh, or or inke e-waste e-waste tools ke tahe, uh, producer ki responsibility hai to uh, for disposal of electronic goods, and and they have to ensure at least 60 percent of electronic wastes, you know, are collected and recycled by 2023. And that's a big responsibility. In fact, staggered responsibility 2024, 70% or 2025, almost 80% of e-waste needs to be, uh, you know, needs to be disposed of, collected and recycled by the manufacturers themselves, right? So, onus on the that you are manufacturing, you are disposing of right? Other questions, right? Like, we are talking about carbon credits, ki baat kar rahe, e-waste pe bhi step ka ek uh, you know, thought process hai, uh, in these new rules. And according to this, companies will be giving some kind of certificate, right? The certificate ka naam bataiye. Or environment ministry, jiske andar yaati hai, un, uska union minister ko hai, right? The answer is EPP, extended uh, producer responsibility ke tehet jo hai, uh, certificate diya jaate hai. Or union minister jo hai, wo hai Shri Bupendar Yadav. All right. Uh, so iske saath uh, ye topic khatam hua. Next topic dekhte hai. Uh, next topic is Air India. Or uh, basically the, the news is that Air India has purchased many aircrafts purchased recently from, uh, from Airbus and Boeing. Uh, and almost 460 aircraft purchased. Hai. Toh, toh obviously, uh, baat ye hai ki Air India ke CEO ne baat kariye ki, uh, you know, there is India is going to benefit and uh, and, and obviously kafi air, air, you know, uh, kafi pilots ki hai. So, so that is that is something that came out in the news. We need to recruit fresh talent. So uh, questions, hai. questions obviously Air India ke basis pe zyada hai, which is ki Air India ke saal established hua tha, uh, aur kisne established kiya tha, who was also at that point in time India's first licensed pilot. Uh, aur fir Air India ko recrisen kiya gaya tha later as Tata Airlines. So ye kaun se saal mein hua tha? Uh, aur, aur fir finally, which year was Air India nationalized uh, and taken out of you know the group of the Tata group, uh, control of the Tata group, uh, or Air India's famous jo motto hai, icon is very famous hai, uh, at, at least in the earlier generations. So, is icon ka naam kya hai, uh, and which is the statutory body that the government has established in order to regulate civil aviation? Right. So, its answers. Look, Air India, jo hai, as far back as 1932, it was established by uh, J R D Tata, or or J R D Tata was time India ke first licensed pilot bhi hai. Then 1938, Air India Tata Airlines ke naam se rename kiya gaya tha. At that point in time, obviously, the Tata Group had majority control of the airline. Uh, and 1938 ke baad wapas jo hai 1952 mein Air India ko nationalize kiya gaya tha. Once, you know, India became a free country. Uh, nationalization process ke basis pe Tata Airlines ko phir Air India ke naam se uh, nationalize karke Air India ka naam diya gaya tha. Uh, and Air India ka famous jo icon hai, wo hai Maharaja. Jo, uh, I mean, in fact, talks hai ki ye bhi change hone wala hai. Uh, and TGCA or uh, the Directorate General of Civil Aviation is the statutory body jo regulate karta hai civil aviation ko jo prices and, and the sectors pe is type ke timings wagera jo hai ye, uh, ye regulate karti hai ye body. Uh, so, so that was about Air India. Next, uh, uh, next topic dekhte hai. Uh, Amadmi party ke kafi sari leaders arrest hoi hai. Man Manisha Sodia. And Satyendar Jain have been arrested, and, and this has been in the news for some time. Uh, and finally, jo hai, Supreme Court ne bhi jo hai, uh, refused to intervene karne ke liye. Ye petition, uh, Deputy Chief uh, Manush, Man, Manish Sisodia, uh, uh, filed it, and uh, arrested against it. And Supreme Court didn't intervene. Nahi kiya. They, they've said, you know, this is now a matter of the particular case, and, and so you'll have to figure it out. So, uh, we questions on this. Article 105 है Constitution का जिसके तहत जो है MPs और MLAs को जो है they enjoy certain privileges uh, and these privileges help them perform their duties their parliamentary duties without any hindrances तो uh, uh, actually answer ही आ गया question में कि कौन सा article था because the article is 105 uh, but next question sector 135 section 135 a है Civil Procedure Act का 1908 का और और इस section uh, is act ke tahet, uh, a member of parliament cannot be arrested in a you know civil case civil case but at least arrest nahi kiya ja sakta and and the and the limit uh, time limit imposed on it is how many days before commencement of the session 
और हाउ मेनी डेज आफ्टर द सेशन इज फिनिश्ड राइट कमिटी मीटिंग आर फिनिश Uh, उस पीरियड तक उनको अरेस्ट नहीं किया जा सकता है एनपी को तो ये क्या लिमिट्स हैं इंपोज किए गए और और फाइनली व्हाट हैपेंस इन क्रिमिनल केसेस यू नो फॉर एनपी सिविल केसेस में तो ये यू नो टाइम रिलैक्सेशन है व्हाट अबाउट क्रिमिनल केसेस देन फाइनली राज्यसभा के जो एक्स ऑफिशियो चेयरमैन है ये कौन है राइट विच कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल पोजिशन ऑक्यूपाइज दिस पोस्ट एंड हु करेंटली होल्ड दिस पोस्ट एंड 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 देन यू नो इस टाइप का जो प्ले आउट हो रहा है महाराष्ट्र में प्ले आउट हो रहा है बिटवीन यू नो टू पॉलिटिकल पार्टीज द द शिंडे फैक्शन एंड ऑब्वियसली द करंट सीएम उद्धव ठाकरे तो इनके डिस्प्यूट पे जो है चीफ जस्टिस ऑफ इंडिया चंद्रचूड जी जो है उन्होंने उन्होंने एक लेजिस्लेटर को के नाम पे एक रूलिंग पास करी है राइट एक एक नोटिफिकेशन दिया है कि एनी लेजिस्लेटर हु Uh, is causing a uh, split in the party and and is probably likely to be you know dismissed from uh, disqualified from elections uh, to unke vote ko jo hai should it, should it be considered in the no confidence motion should his vote be given consideration to is trust vote pe jo hai unka kya unki kya rai thi right so iske answers dekhte hain article 105 of our constitution allows special privileges to mps uh, and section 135a of the civil procedure code of 1908 कहता है कि किसी भी एमपी को जो है 40 दिन सेशन के कमेंट्स होने से पहले और 40 दिन सेशन के फिनिश होने के बाद तक अरेस्ट नहीं किया जा सकता है बट ये सिविल केसेस में ही ये रिलैक्सेशन है इन क्रिमिनल केसेस दे हैव एब्सोल्युटली नो इम्यूनिटी दे कैन बी अरेस्टेड इमीडिएटली एंड राज्यसभा के एक्स ऑफिशियो चेयरमैन है वाइस प्रेसिडेंट ऑफ इंडिया जो करेंटली द पोस्ट इज हेल्ड बाई श्री जगदीप धनकर और चीफ जस्टिस ऑफ इंडिया ने जो शिंडे फैक्शन और और उद्धव ठाकरे के बीच में जो केस है उसमें बोला है कि कि ऐसा एक मेंबर डिसअलाउ हो जाएगा ऐसा एक मेंबर जो पार्टी को स्प्लिट करता है और फिर ट्रस्ट वोट उसके वजह से बुलाया जाता है और काफी लाइकली है कि वो डिस्कालीफाई हो जाए तो उसको ट्रस्ट वोट में पार्टिसिपेट करने से डिसअलाउ किया है सी ने चीफ जस्टिस ऑफ इंडिया सी श्री चंद्रचूड ने नेक्स्ट टॉपिक देखते हैं अडोप्ट हेरिटेज स्कीम राइट वेरी यूनिक स्कीम जिसके बेसिस पर गवर्नमेंट कह रही है कि भाई यू नो ऑल प्राइवेट कंपनीज ऑर्गेनाइजेशन एंड पब्लिक सेक्टर यूनिट्स दे कैन एंटर इन टू अग्रीमेंट्स विद द यूनियन मिनिस्टर ऑफ कल्चर और 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 वो क्या कर सकते हैं कि एक हेरिटेज बिल्डिंग या आर्कियोलॉजिकल साइट को आप अडॉप्ट कर सकते हो अडॉप्ट uh, करके आप उस पर उसको मैनेज कर सकते हो यू कैन यू कैन यू कैन कलेक्ट फंड फॉर इट यू कैन डू वेरियस थिंग्स फॉर इट एंड एंड दिस इज आई थिंक एन एक्सलेंट आइडिया और इस पे क्वेश्चन देखते हैं अंडर दिस स्कीम बिजनेसेस को इन्वॉल्व किया जा रहा है तो वो जो फंड्स डिप्लॉय करेंगे राइट एंड दे कैन दे कैन यूज फंड्स फॉर वैरायटी ऑफ रीजंस दे कैन दे कैन डू कंस्ट्रक्शन दे कैन डू रिपेयर्स दे कैन हैव टिकटिंग ऑफिस दे कैन दे कैन ओपन रेस्टोरेंट म्यूजियम्स तो बेसिकली उस टूरिज्म साइट को डेवलप करने के लिए वो जो फंड डिप्लॉय करेंगे वो कहाँ से आएंगे एंड सिमिलर सॉर्ट ऑफ रेस्टोरेशन की हम बात कर रहे हैं तो मुंबई में एक बहुत फेमस बिल्डिंग को रिस्टोर किया गया है पास किया गया दिस इज बाई विच मिनिस्ट्री राइट ऑफ द यूनियन गवर्नमेंट राइट इट इज वेरी इजी आंसर फंड बाई कंपनी शुड बी फ्रॉम दर सी एस आर फंड कॉपरेट सोशल रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी फंड uh and restoration of the royal opera building in mumbai was completed in 2015 and this scheme the adopt a heritage scheme does not come under the ministry of tourism don't get confused it actually comes under the ministry of union ministry of culture uh aur ispe aur bhi do questions hai bahut ek uh, notable case tha where uh, the murti trust which is the family foundation of uh, you know sudha murti and narayan murti ji sudha murti is the daughter of narayan murti and the uh, and the wife of ऋषि सुनक हुज द यू के प्राइम मिनिस्टर तो इस मूर्ति फाउंडेशन ने जो है साढ़े सात करोड़ का एक ग्रांट दिया है टू विच इंस्टीट्यूट इन ऑर्डर टू प्रिजर्व रेयर बुक्स प्रिजर्व एंड कंडक्ट रिसर्च ऑन रेयर बुक्स एंड मैन्यूस्क्रिप्ट इन संस्कृत एंड प्राकृत तो ये कौन सा ऑर्गेनाइजेशन था एंड फाइनली देर आर सिमिलर यू नो नॉन गवर्नमेंटल ऑर्गेनाइजेशन जस्ट लाइक द ए एस आई विच ट्राइंग टू प्रोटेक्ट मॉन्यूमेंट्स फ्रॉम एमरजेंट थ्रेट्स यू नो such as climate change right so aise kaun se organizations hai do aise organizations hai answers dekhte hain the bandarkar 
uh, Oriental Research Institute or BORI uh, is the name of the institute, which got a funding of seven and a half crores from the Murthy Foundation. Uh, and two organizations that uh, work towards preservation of monuments are the Center for uh, Advancement of Technic Traditional Building, Technology and Skills, right? This is one organization. And the second organization is DRONA, which is the Development and Research Organization for Nature, Arts and Heritage. And so these are two non-governmental organizations in case, uh, in case pass, obviously courses we have, but they also have a lot of sort of initiatives that, uh, that protect buildings, that protect our heritage, ecology from climate change. Uh, to read more about this, uh, you know, access the research links. Uh, video ke description mein jaiye, link pe click kijiye, sign up kijiye, or test ke form mein lene ke baad aapko isi topic pe additional research ke links bhi aap mein jaiye. Okay, next topic pe aate hai, which is the Windsor framework. Windsor framework uh, is, is the framework that has recently come about in uh, Northern Ireland. Agar aap yaad rakhenge, Brexit ke uh, agreement ke baad, jo hai, the bone of contention was Northern Ireland because it's a route, you know, it's like an in-between, uh, you know, nation. It's an in-between sort of uh, country or uh, uh, independent nation which that doesn't belong to the UK, right? But if it belongs to the European Union, uh, it, that the problem is that it will it will affect trade, right, between UK and the EU. And and EU ke under na aane ke wajah se, uh, you know, those uh, there will be more restrictions on UK and and Northern Northern Ireland is 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 in the midst of that, right? And and resolving this is crucial for both UK and the EU. So, this is the Windsor Framework, which is the new deal. The uh, Windsor Framework has been implemented. Hui hai. Uh, and, and it will regulate trade between UK and Northern Ireland and, and onwards with the EU. Right? And this is the Windsor Framework, which is the Northern Ireland Protocol, hua karta tha, which was agreed also as part of the Brexit. So, uh, you know, these are the two deals that we will talk about. So the question is that under the Northern Ireland Protocol, which existed before, inspection and document checks were done for goods traveling from which portion of the world to which portion of the world and uh, these checks were performed where, right? So, so the answer uh, for these questions, uh, and but more questions, right? The Windsor Framework, which envisages how many lanes for goods, right? How many border pe kitne lanes will for goods that are coming in for trade? Uh, and the green lane jo hai, will represent which kind of goods. And if you see answers, dekhte, the Northern Ireland Protocol uh, will, will be used for inspection and document checking for goods coming in from you know, Great Britain, all the three, uh, you know, basically England, um, England, Scotland, and Wales. In Tino, uh, jo, jo states hai, which are part of the Great Britain, uh, all three of them, in this goods agar aate hai, enter karte hai, and they are going to Northern Ireland at uh, through its you know ports, then the Northern Ireland Protocol will apply. And under the Windsor framework, uh, there will be two different lanes for goods that are coming in from uh, that is that are coming arriving in Northern Ireland from the from the Great Britain. Uh, and these two lanes will be red and green. And and the green lane will be reserved for those goods which are intended for you know Northern Ireland. And the red lane will be ones which uh, go onwards to the EU, right? Uh, but the, the topic is not finished. No questions all. And Brexit agreement, jo hai, uh, it introduces, it also gives for a fail safe. It also allows for some kind of a break. What is the name of that break? That allows Northern Ireland Assembly to, you know, object to any of the rules that are passed under Brexit, right? That are passed by the EU. So basically, up, uh, up, 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 jo hai, Northern Ireland ko power diya gaya hai to, to say no to certain kind of rules. And that no can be said through a through a provision called the uh, called which break and name that break uh, and and number two Northern Ireland ka position kya hai right it has rejected actually it has rejected both the Brexit and the Northern Ireland Protocol in the past right uh, and and that is because of which major trade union right unionist party uh, that is based out of Northern Ireland right in ke naam kya hai. so so the Stormont break is the name given to uh, you know this. Uh, break or, or the fail safe in the Brexit agreement, which allows Northern Ireland to say no, you know, we, we don't, we object to this particular rule. Uh, and so it will be immediately frozen. Trade will be immediately frozen. Uh, and, and Northern Ireland protocol or Brexit ko jo hai reject karne wali, uh, jo trade unionist party hai, uh, that is the Democratic Unionist Party of Ireland, DPA. Sorry, DUP. Uh, 
uh, of Ireland. Right. So, so again, very interesting topic, fascinating topic. I think you should read more about it. Find the link by signing up for our portal and uh, read up more about this topic. Uh, next topic, uh, we discuss it. It is the International Court of Justice and Climate Change. And uh, the news is basically that there are 16 countries led by this small island nation called Vanuatu. Uh, and uh, they have basically, uh, obviously, Paris Climate to Paris, Paris Agreement to Paris, but these 16 countries have filed a petition with the uh, United Nations and they are basically asking what are the rules that govern and how do, you know, uh, uh, advisory opinion manga gaya from the International Court of Justice ki climate change ko log kaise manage kare, how do we know what each country needs to do and how do we get commitments on those, right? So, is pe question hai ki CJ, uh, ICJ, the International Court of Justice, uh, do type ke jurisdictions hai unki. One is the, the current approach which Vanuatu has done and these countries have done, which is an advisory opinion, right? But what other kind of opinion is there? Uh, and, and which of these things are not related to climate change and, and we're talking about UNGA, UN General Assembly, Kyoto Protocol, the Paris Agreement, and the UNFCC, United Nations Federation for, uh, Feder uh, you know, United Nations Framework uh, Convention on Climate Change. Uh, and 67th question, which is Vanuatu Initiative, which seeks to clarify, uh, you know, what kind of obligations, right? So, what do you think about this? Because Paris Agreement to individual country ke targets or uh, SDG sustainable development goals ko set karne ki usne, nationally determined uh, you know uh, targets hai usme to na, sorry na, nationally determined uh, targets hai usme, right so so what kind of obligations is it is it questioning from the ICJ uh, and and Vanuatu itself comes under this this group of nations called the SID what does SID stand for uh, and the international tribunal for law of seas right uh, again relevant hai to Vanuatu uh, this international tribunal for law of the seas is based out of which nation, which city? Uh, so, so the answers to these questions are that the International Court of Justice has two kinds of jurisdictions. One is advisory, we will tell you in particular law, in particular field, in which type you can proceed kar sakte hai, to, to set up frameworks and, and regulations. And, and the second kind is contentious, where two nations or group of nations are being disputed and you, you come to us about a specific point that is a bone of contention, right? So contentious issues and advisory uh, jurisdiction. Uh, and obviously amongst the names given in the option choices, only the UN General Assembly has nothing to do with climate change. Kyoto Protocol was in the 1990s, was one of the first sort of uh, conventions on uh, climate change and involved a lot of countries. Uh, obviously, it grew eventually to one of the you know conference of parties that happened at Paris. And, and then the agreement adopted was called the Paris Agreement. And all of this comes under you know what was established under the protocol Kyoto Protocol as the UNFCC, the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change, right? So there's plenty of reading up you can do. The history of this is quite uh, you know detailed, and there's a lot to be learned about this. Uh, the Vanuatu initiatives, though, uh, recently news may have that seeks a legal obligation on nations, right? So that's the unique uh, question that they are asking. Uh, and as as regards Vanuatu itself, it's a small island developing. That's the category that Vanuatu fits in. It's an island nation. Uh, and as regards islands, they're affected by, you know, law of the sea. So so the law of the sea, which the international tribunal established that is based out of Hamburg. Right. So so interesting topic, I thought. Uh, next topic, dekhte, RBI ne jo hai, ek coin ending machine ka pilot kiya hai. Uh, and this was uh, announced and stated by the RBI governor, who's uh, uh, Shakti Kanta Das. So, uh, to, to is pilot project ke mein specialty kya hai, right? And, you know, the vending machines in the pilot would do what? Uh, and it, because we coins, ki baat kar rahe hai, coins jo hai, accessibility of these coins. Are these coins in high demand, low demand, high supply, low supply? What kind of a status are these in? Uh, and how many coins does India currently, you know, have in circulation? Uh, what, uh, and then RBI in 2022, mein, 1st December 2022, mein, they announced the first retail pilot of which thing. Uh, you know, there's plenty of, you know, digital currency pay and digital things. So, RBI or uh, our government name announced. Kiya. So, in on December 1st, 2022, what was the announcement? Uh, and, and this pilot initially covers four major nations, four major cities. Uh, three of those cities are Delhi, Mumbai, uh, and Bengaluru, which is the fourth city in the pilot, right? Uh, jo hum coin vending machine ki baat kar rahe. 
and which of these is not a valid digital mode of payment in India, right? We've all heard about UPI, NEFP, IMBS, and so on, but what about these four, right? So the answers to these questions, the, uh, uh, the vending machines, ka jo unique aspect of that even though they are giving you coins, they don't do it like an ATM. They actually don't access your bank account. They actually use the UPI, the UPI network. Uh, and coins, this uh, pilot project is done because the coins ka supply is very high hai usually, but the, the consumption of it is not very high because people are not able to access it that way. Right? And currently in India, there are six kinds of coins in circulation. The 50 paisa, the 1, one rupee, the 2 rupees, the 5 rupee, 10 rupee, and the 20 rupee. Um, and on 1st December 2022, the RBI announced a pilot uh, project for the e-rupee. Right, and uh, this pilot, uh, you know, was initially in four cities, which is which are Mumbai, uh, Delhi, Bengaluru, and Bhubaneswar. Right, and and of the given option choices, e rupee uh, and and the fast tag, obviously, they are both digital modes of payment, uh, and so is the USSD. The basically USSD is a very different kind of a payment method. Description video link click and follow it to, to know more about this officially. And but USSD basically you you basically type on your phone, you type 99, uh, I think followed by a code, uh, and, and then you will be able to do uh back into bank transfers. Uh so so that's also there. So none of the above are unrelated, right? So all of them uh, are valid digital modes of payment. That's the answer. Uh, next topic, dekhte, India, Australia in, you know, collaborating on higher education, right? So the Australia ke jo education minister, hai, wo aaye the India mein, led a delegation of Australian higher university, uh, higher education leaders. And, and obviously the pitch was to promote greater collaboration. And one of the things that came out of it was also something that we'll discuss. So to start with, who is the union minister of education in India? Uh, and, and they both are signing an agreement majorly on what? One issue, what was the major agreement? Uh, India ka NEP jo hai, usne target rakha of raising higher education and vocational education initiatives to how much uh, by 2020 35. Uh, and uh, uh, is agreement ke baad, Australia ke two universities jo hai, yaha offshore campuses set up kar rahe, which are these universities and uh, and and jo unme se ek university hai, uska proposed campus jo hai, India ke konse city mein hai, right? Uh, so answers dekhte hai, Sri Dharmendra Pradhan is the uh, Union Minister for Education in our country and these uh, Australia and India are signing an agreement for mutual recognition of qualifications. Ki bhai, Indian student jab bahar jata hai, uske qualifications Australia mein recognize ho, likewise Australian qualifications back in India, right? And uh, the NEP puts a target of, you know, 50% increase in enrollments in higher education and vocational education by 2035. That's a very ambitious number. Uh, and, and two Australian universities which are going to set shop in India, this is uh, Deakin, Univers Deakin University and the Wollongong University uh, from Australia. And, and the Deakin University will actually set up, uh, actually has almost agreed to set up a campus in the gift city of Gujarat. Right? So those are your answers. Uh, next topic, we have arrest warrant issue kiya gaya hai, Imran Khan ke against, uh, in fact, kafi sare cases filed kiya the, and, and some of those have been dismissed by the Pakistani court. But, uh, you know, one of these has not, right? So, uh, arrest kiya gaya unko, kis vishay mein arrest kiya gaya, which is the Tosha Khana case. And, and so, what is the Tosha Khana? Pakistan ka kya maan, kya cheez hai ye? Uh, and Imran Khan is accused, what is he charged with, right? What is he charged with, uh, you know, buying from the Tosha Khana at a discounted price? Uh, and Imran Khan, jo hai, kaun se political party ke chief hai? Unke background ke baare mein batai ki, wo pehle kaun se field se aate hai? And after being removed, remember, the cycle of events is that before they removed kiya gaya tha, no confidence motion ke, uh, ko pass karke in April 2022 and then subsequently in, uh, you know, in I think June or August, uh, there was a case that he was actually disqualified from being a member of parliament, right? And, and, and so why did, who removed him as a MP? Uh, so, so the answers to these questions that Tosha Khanna is the state depository jahan pe jitne bhi gifts as uh, you know, when a when a when a uh, when a country's leader goes and visits various countries, you get tend to get quite a lot of gifts, and uh, so those are put in the Tosha Khana, and and 
uh, Imran Khan is accused of buying these items, right, including a very expensive watch at heavily discounted prices, right? So corruption ke charges hai. Uh, or uh, Imran Khan jo hai Pakistan ke Tariq uh, in Saf PTI hai, Pakistan Tariq in Saf uh, ke, ke chief hai uh, and uh, he is obviously a very celebrated cricketer he's in fact a World Cup winning captain from Pakistan uh, and after being removed from office right in in April 2022 unpe uh, unko disqualify kiya gaya by the election commission of uh, Pakistan uh, well he can no longer be an MP right. But obviously, he's still uh, on the ground. He's still taking out rallies and protests, right? And, and let's see how that plays out. Uh, next topic, we are economic offenders. Ki baat kar rahe uh, India has uh, proposed a proposed in the G20 meeting economic offenders with a regulation tight kare. Allow for these economic offenders to be brought back uh, in case extradition ko simplify kiya jai. Or, or basically, is pe thoda sa progress karte hai. because India ke kafi sare offenders jo hai, bahar deshon mein, they are finding refuge, they are finding safe haven, right? Uh, so, is pe questions dekhte hai, right? Uh, an individual who, uh, individual against, jinke, jinke against a warrant nikali gai hai in related to a particular offense, uh, and, and this warrant has been issued by any court in India, and has then subsequently, uh, you know, left India to avoid criminal prosecution. What is the term given to him? Uh, or her, right? And which of these persons, no, given in the option choices, are not such, you know, such persons designated on that list? Uh, and uh, India may is vishay mein jo hai, specific legislation bhi hai. Us legislation naam bataiye. Or uh, or G20 ki baat kar rahe, to G20 ki ek troika hoti hai, right? Three uh, members of the G20 form a troika, including the current uh, sort of host. Uh, so India is obviously the host currently of the G20 summit, uh, and Brazil is also the second country in the Troika, which is the third one. So answers, dekhte hai, the Fugitive Economic Offender, FEO, is the person in ke against a case where kisi, uh, kisi bhi court may file ki gai ho, kisi of scheduled offense pe, or, or fir wo prosecution avoid karne ke liye kisi dus, country ko chhoad ke bhaal chala jai, usko Fugitive Economic Offender ka naam diya jata hai, or India mein Nirav Modi and, and, and uh, Vijay Malia, Nirav Modi and Mehul Choksi are famous names who are Fugitive economic offenders, but uh, well, Rana Ayub is not. Even though she has been charged with a crime, she's still not a uh, an uh, FEO. Uh, and this legislation hai, that is the Fugitive, Fugitive Economic Offenders Act of 2018. Uh, this is an act that has been passed. So you can see the government is trying to sort of uh, ease up, you know, the extradition of such people. Um, and uh, G20 Troika, which are the three countries, hai, wo hai, Brazil, India, and Indonesia. Right. So learn more, read up more about the G20. Uh, past maybe my topic pe questions discuss kar chukau, and more importantly, I'll give you more links that you can that you can use to further your research. Right. But tak baat extradition ki kar rahe, obviously we can't not talk about one of the most famous cases, which is that of Julian Assange. Julian Assange, jo hai ek uh, WikiLeaks ke, ke saath in, in ka affiliation in ka chata hai. So uh, way back in 2012, uh, when you know he was obviously been sought for arrest by uh, the US, then he had taken refuge in uh, in London. Ke, London ke kisi embassy mein unhone refuge diya tha as a uh, asylum. As asylum, to unko kaun se embassy mein ho gaye the? Kis country ke embassy mein ho gaye the? And 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 eventually in 2019, uh, which year actually is the question? Ki us saal mein wo asylum withdraw kar liya gaya tha aur fir unko arrest kiya gaya tha London mein. Of jail mein dala gaya tha. Toh, ye saal mein hua? Telling you the answer is 2019. Uh, and before that, he was taken asylum in the Ecuadorian uh, you know, embassy in London. Uh, all right, next topic pe aate S400 ke deliveries ke baare mein hai ye topic ki bhai, uh, you know, deliveries of five regiments are, are supposed to be completed by the end of 2024. It's a, it's a huge deal for an almost 4.3 billion, 5.4 billion dollars ka deal hai. Uh, but it's payments give issues for it, right? So, so let's talk about this. Uh, past your delivery 2014 24 can be over to have How many have been delivered by Russia? Uh, and payments keep at career. So, which of these payments is you know is being used by under this deal, uh, for, for S400s? Uh, and and uh, Russia may ek you know kilo class submarine hai, jo repairs ke liye, jo maintenance ke liye humne beja hai. Uh, and and this you know was also very controversial because it came after an accident occurred in February 2014 and two of our 
naval officers were also killed in that accident. Uh, so which ship are we talking about? Um, and the S-400 deal has been delayed by payments, right? Uh, but the uh, payments, jo hai, uh, sorry, the previous question was not about how the payments are happening. It's the invested concept payments ko jo hai, U.S. sanctions, ke saath, uh, you know, which of these terms is related to the U.S. sanctions, right? And and finally, because we India, Russia ki trade, ki baat kar rahe, so who is the, you know, who is the Russian foreign minister, right? So its answers, dekhte. there are three of those five shipments, three of the five regiments of S-400s have already been delivered, payment completed, uh, but the rest of it is still pending um, and there are payment issues there. Uh, so, so talking about, you know, sanctions by the US, well, the, the CATSA or the countering uh, America's adversaries through sanctions act, right? The CATSA is, is the act through which the US imposes sanctions on various countries, including Russia. Uh, and, and obviously, these sanctions are affecting SWIFT payments to the, you know, companies, there's, uh, Russian banks go SWIFT payment mechanisms. Uh, the Financial Action Task Force is also one that is used by the United Nations, is used by the World Bank, uh, you know, uh, as, as a parameter to determine, you know, that you have a FATF ke konse list, pe ho, list pe ho, ki blacklisted. Ho. Uh, so, so those are those are things. But NATO again is the North American Treaty Organization standard. It's a it's a it's a uh, it's a military sort of uh, uh, partnership of nations. It's a uh, but it has nothing to do with U.S. sanctions, right? So the answer, correct answer, is option B, Katsa. Uh, or or India ka the Navy class, uh, sorry, kilo class uh, submarine, hai, Navy submarine, its name is Sinduratnam, uh, INS Sinduratnam. Uh, is is the submarine which is currently you know under repair in Russia? I think that is almost also complete. Or S four hundred deal ka jo balance payment hai, uh, the the payments will now happen in uh, in in ruble rupee exchange, right? So so we'll directly pay that in rubles or rupees. So that's being proposed. Obviously, the world over we are seeing de dollarization. I uh, I certainly hope that you will keep a watch out for that topic. Um, uh, but last question pe aate hai ki. Uh, Russia ke defense, uh, sorry, foreign minister kona Sergei Lavrov hai. Kafi visit kar rahe India mein. So uh, he's also finding mention in all major newspapers and headlines, right? So uh, ye naam zaroor yaad rakhye. Chaliye, last topic for the day. US ne jo hai F-16s sell karne ka deal kiya Taiwan ke saath. And obviously China is pissed off. Is, is saying, well, this seriously damages relations between Washington and us. Uh, so, so let's talk about this, right? So... Uh, what was Washington's policy so far on, you know, uh, on Taiwan? Saying, you know, it obviously has played up the uh, the the formal official position is that China kahi hissa hai Taiwan. Uh, so so that's the way we see it. But which policy of the U.S. Uh, as as positioned it that way? Uh, and uh, uh, jo arms ka agreement fight uh, kia hai U.S. or Taiwan ke beech mein hua hai. So which companies are going to sell these arms to Taiwan? Uh, and and uh, in the past, there was a deal between the U.S. and Taiwan. It's called the Sino-American Mutual Defense Treaty. It's kind of U.S. says that, well, we, uh, you know, we'll just help you keep yourself protected, right? So that Sino-American Mutual Defense Treaty uh, was signed in which year? And and a few nitbits about Taiwan itself, right? Well, we make bar topic discuss kar chunga, but more questions here. What is the official name by which Taiwan is known? Formal name kya hai Taiwan ka? Hum, uh, you know. Dante usko Taiwan se, right? And and in which year? Because Taiwan has a history where it was originally, you know, it was originally captured by Japan and then and then it was retaken by China, uh, and then eventually it also became separate again. Right. So so what uh, in which year when did China retake it from Japan? Right. So so iske answers dekhte. the one China policy is the policy that the US has under which it says that Taiwan is indeed a part of China. Uh, and uh, the the companies that are going to supply arms to weapons to uh, the, the the country of Taiwan is uh, are the companies which are Raytheon and uh, and Lockheed Martin uh, and 1954 में जो है US ने uh, America ने जो है Taiwan के साथ ये mutual defense treaty sign करी थी uh, and Taiwan is officially known as the Republic of China don't don't let that confuse you I know Recently, an Indian politician also got confused. Republic of Th China, does that mean we're talking about China or Taiwan? Well, Republic of China is Taiwan uh, and People's Republic of China is China, right? Uh, 
Uh, and when did China retake uh, Taiwan from Japan? Well, it was uh, right after World War II, 1945, ki baat hai, which is when China managed to retake the island nation of Taiwan. Uh, well, uh, that finishes, wraps up uh, my discussion for today. Um, I hope you had, uh, you know, you had good use of this session. I think you have a lot topics introduced, kiye, questions when you have I hope it challenged you. I hope... Uh, I hope that you will also uh, sign up for our account because there are many benefits that I have told in the video. But more importantly, you will get a free mock from our exceedingly high quality test series. Se. Uh, yaad rakhe, our tests are made with deep research, ke saath, clad ke pattern, we have made a little bit of variations so that you will have a little challenge in every mock. Se, dusre mock mein kuch -kuch variations rahenge. But they are all very very similar to you know, the, the pattern that CLAT has set up for it. Uh, and all you need to do is, is just create a free account. Uh, video uh, ke description mein link diya gaya. Aap sign up, kije, follow the next steps. And well, you'll be able to access your test today. Give me a thumbs up. Agar aapko ye video pasand aaya, subscribe kije channel channel. And, and do catch me in the next week's uh, video. Thank you. Have a great day. Wish you all the very best.